Hello my fellow hunters, polycles and barbarians. Today we're gonna discuss a very big thing, which is Iceborne. Now we all know what Iceborne is, by I imagine by now. The big massive expansion that's gonna bring whole new mechanics to weapons, new monsters, new map, new bloody everything essentially, which is very exciting, that's for damn sure. Uh, and today I'm here to discuss the many amazing things that we have in store for Iceborne of, which, of what we know so far. So I'm gonna give my first impressions and thoughts uh, about, well, the expansion itself. Even though it's not out yet, I thought I'd give something at least at the moment. Maybe I'll do a full review after beating the story mode and the rest of the game. Anyway, uh, my point is we're gonna discuss about multiple things about the game with my thoughts on it. So let's be let it begin then. Number one thing I want to talk about first, the expansion itself. It was nothing that I have, could have expected it to be. Because when back in December or whenever the Game Awards happened, it... Uh, uh, Monster Hunter World got the award of best RPG, which I'm still very confused what it's really supposed to mean. Because it's supposed to mean roleplay game, but I don't see the roleplay in this type of game. I don't know, it's very confusing. Anyway, um, so when they said they were gonna reveal something very important and stuff soon, I was very hyped. Some people were saying G-Ranks, I'm saying new monsters, I'm saying whatever nonsense, a ton of new things. And we kind of got both of that. We got the Witcher uh, DLC that was uh, gonna come out uh, with the Legend and Gerald Riveria. Uh, Gerald Riveria. I don't know, uh, his name is a mouthful sometimes. Anyway, and also we got Arch Temper Nergigante a bit later on, but definitely was confirmed to come out. And then we got the bomb of the thing. Uh, or let's say what really broke the ice. Mm. Anyway, um, yeah, Iceborne. We can announce. No one was expecting such a thing, especially how before they did the whole, you know, sending it in a different disc, like, you know, box. Like it's a separate thing, but you can pass your data and everything. I don't know, it was very strange why they did that. Very questionable, but uh, at least they're not doing it anymore. Anyway, I pre-ordered that uh, the one uh, the Iceborne in seconds when it was uh, officially out for pre-order. When their gameplay show, uh, gameplay reveal was shown, I was not expecting what it was gonna be, from the monsters to even the flagship or the map itself. I. Didn't expect to be so foresty. Really expect to be more mountain-like, which probably is further down the map. But I, I didn't expect it to have that many trees in the combat zone, like in your areas and stuff, and can be destroyed and knocked down, and in this case get picked up by Banboro, which, by the way, is probably one of my favorite brute variants so far that I'm seeing. It's like a Duramboros like animal, creature, monster. I don't know, I just really like the design how it's more mammalian than reptile, which is definitely a, a plus for me. And also the the small monsters, the wolves, are also lovely. Really hope they have a great world or something. Maybe, I don't know. Hopefully it's true. Anyway, so, the map. The Horror Frost Reach. It is a thing of beauty, that's one thing for them, sure. Love the environmental traps and everything, the footage you're seeing at the moment is probably me exploring it uh, to its limit. And wow, it's a thing of beauty. There's so many like tiny sp tiny sp uh, places that I never would have found if I didn't do uh, the thing. And it's honestly just shocking how how crazy it is, it's just so vast and snowy and 
I don't know, it's just, it's gonna be the biggest map in the game, from what we know, so that's very exciting. I'm still, because some people are saying that the older maps are gonna get some, like, upgrades, like some new zones on it, which is questionable, but also not. I don't know, that idea is something I'm not really looking forward to see, because I doubt it's actually gonna happen. But if it happens, that would be nice, actually. I don't know, at least to give something new to the old maps and not just uh, uh, the whole Frost Reach. Granted, how half of the story is supposed to take on the new world instead of the horror frost reach. Anyway, it is a thing of beauty. Love the attention of detail they put into it, from the snow, how it leaves a trail, and everything. It's just amazing. Honestly, good map. Probably one of my favorites uh, so far. Well, it's gonna be the only map. We was expecting we were gonna get a second one at least. I don't know. But uh eh, that's a bit much of asking I guess. Anyway, now to our next thing. The goddamn monkeys. They're adorable, like holy <laughs> Sorry, I got lost there for a second. No, seriously, uh, uh, though. The monkeys, the spring hot hot spring macaque. Eh, I think they're called like that, I don't know. They're adorable, they're just adorable, and I love how they're actually based on Makake. That's their natural name, right? I don't know, but they're supposed to be based on these monkeys from Japan that live in hot springs. Uh, or go into hot springs to warm up and everything, which is lovely. Lovely, lovely. We really would love to see more of how they had to build the map itself with going to places and other snowy places. Just lovely, that's for damn sure. And cannot wait to see the rest of the map uh, as well. Eh, there's probably gonna be more hot springs and stuff. Anyway, so now I want to talk about something very interesting the gathering hub. It's definitely nothing that I could have expected it to be. From when we got it, like a hint to it and when, in one of the live streams they were doing at E3. God, I wish I was there. Uh, they were like showing Celiana, which I'm gonna talk in a bit, but definitely this part is more important, which you'll see why. Um, I was hoping it was more accessible, more socially, and having the actual, op uh, having more, being able to actually be there without the disadvantage of not getting things like the farm, smithy, and not another nonsense. You know, the whole, like the gathering half of before in the new world, in Astera. Uh, the concept was nice, but it really didn't live up to, to it. You didn't see that many people daily. Usually it's rare to find even one person there besides you. The only time you can ever actually find multiple people is whenever it's cold. Uh, cold is around. Actually that reminds me how I used to like put on a wiggler hand and turn on the mic with groups and then started dancing uh, with music in the background from my phone. Ah, memories. Anyway, uh, if you want the footage, I'll give it to you. Anyway, um, anyway, so the new gathering hub. Godlike, it's just, oh my god, the feeling of warmth is just, ooh, it's lovely, just the the spa for the feed and the hot spring further down the line which funny enough reminds me how they actually like edited the directors of the game the art designer thing director of world and the other one from iceborne like they actually edited themselves into a, one of the hot springs which was just hilarious and just wholesome in a way i don't know why just very cute in a way uh, now i want to go to a hot spring myself Anyway, honestly, it's probably one of the best things I could have found in the in the gathering hub. It's definitely gonna be much more full of people, especially how it's very easy to access your things now. So hopefully, it doesn't have the same fate that the gathering hub of before had, which had no people in it for the most part. If I'm honest, yeah, it was kind of like that. Anyway. Hopefully it lives up to it. Now I want to talk about Celiana. Woo! Celiana is something pretty, that's for damn sure. 
like the thing is, it has a, a very Viking way. I guess it's the snow and stuff. And I guess the snow makes it look prettier, which is definitely a plus. And oh my god, the music for uh, Celiana is just. Oh, it's godlike. Godlike. Just goodbye, Asterodim. Goodbye, bloody everything. Just. That's it. Just. That's it. It's gone. Just forget the rest. Just uh, Celiana Deem. It's just so. It's. Ah, it's like Poke Village vibes for probably some of you more veteran hunters than me. But definitely it's, whew, it's something. And apparently the night version of this, it's gonna be more like a bar type thing. And I'm actually very interested in how they're gonna do that because the night version of Astera was barely even different. So hopefully this is more unique than anything. But eh, very excited for uh, the new uh, the new hub, uh, Celiana, which looks pretty. Still wished that you could have seen other people. Maybe not in store maybe not in the story, maybe afterwards, or maybe in a mode to activate and disactivate being able to see people and stuff. I don't know, they could have probably worked something there. And also wish of the whole, you know, cutscenes in the story to be able to be joined by others. But uh, I can see why they didn't, because they wanted to make it more based with you and not with multiple. Eh, maybe in the future DLC. Moving on, now one definitely important detail is the Crown Meowster. She's just, mmm, just... Whoever is the design person who made her and helped to uh, make her, I just want to give you a hug for creating the best Grandma Cat you could have ever created. Doesn't sound weird, does it? Anyway, um, uh, she's, uh, she's really nice and warm. It feels so warm and everything. Like, has a warm feeling of, you know, warmth, especially in the place where she cooks. And how fluffy she looks in the face, like with those cheek, cheek fur, or I don't know, whatever the thing that she has in her face. You know, she's essentially like a lovely grandma, which is very cute. And honestly, just if she was real, I will be going every Saturday, like, uh, for the cookies and that. Uh, just, it's, it's lovely. I, I love her. She's, she's a great character. Hopefully we have to, we get to interact with her a bit more in the upcoming Iceborne uh, expansion. Whenever it drops, which is September 6th. Anyway, moving on. Now the final thing we're gonna talk about. The monsters. Or at least the ones we know so far. Anyway. Oh my god, we're getting Brachydeos. Uh, yeah. Anyway, if we ignore the Brachydeos part, which wasn't revealed yet, but was hinted at. I was very shocked that we got to see Glavinus in the game. It really was like a Wondery... Wonder... Wondery... Bleh! Wondery that we didn't really think would, would ever be broke. Because, uh, you know, it's from a spin-off. Technically, it's like a main series spin-off from what Capcom calls it. Anyway, uh, it looks very interesting, that's for sure. And any other monsters that we have upcoming, which are like Tyrex and Narga, look amazing. Barrio, lovely. And uh, also, the subspecies, the Ebony Odogaron was supposed to be, uh, I think it was that. Oh my god, they went from 0 to 100 with that thing, like, oh my, Balhasak is definitely gonna have its tail crossed between its legs with this guy now in you in town. We, we better get a turf war with them, and it better not be the same. Anyway, and now with Fulgur and Janath, he's fantastic, just, it's lovely to see old monsters from the early game get subspecies for G rank, or master rank in this case. Because it keeps them at least being able to experience them differently, but also not so differently. It gives you the, uh, I don't know, it's just nice to see them again in action with old and new attacks. I don't know, it's just lovely. Definitely lovely. Hopefully we get many other subspecies for the earlier game monsters. Puke Puke, like a sleep Puke Puke maybe. I could see that being a thing. 
Maybe on the Coral Highlands. Well, actually, damn, I actually might make that an actual video for the next time, if for the future. Anyway, I'm getting carried away. Subspecies, lovely. Cannot wait to see more of them. The new monsters that are returning, lovely as well. Still waiting to see some real, real new monsters so far. If we scratch Bamber and Beotores with new monsters, we still didn't get any other new, new, like world beginning new to to the franchise monsters. I'm definitely curious what we what they have in store with that. Mine is Belkan and Bamber, of course. Ah, Belkana looks beautiful as well. That's of, uh, one of the things. And oh my god, the armor looks amazing as well. Anyway, moving on. Just, I'm very, very, very excited for Iceborne. I cannot wait. It looks fantastic. And... Uh, it's, it's nice, born. I totally didn't install the joke that the director made. Uh, moving on. Uh, so thank you for watching this low budget video of mine and hopefully you have a fun time hunting uh, for the upcoming monsters which will definitely kick our asses in ice form. Huh. Now give me a second and I need to yell about something. Oh my god! Bracky Dios is coming to world! <laughs>